So we now know enough about Riemann sums to define the Riemann integral. So we are going to define what is meant by the integral from a to b of f of x dx, at least in the Riemann sense we are. Now I want to try and motivate this as best I can, so I will draw another picture. So here is our interval from a to b, and here is our function f of x. And this is beautifully showing a function that does intuitively have an area under its curve. And therefore this is one, this is representing one that should intuitively have a integral in our formal definition. Before we go any further, let me just give you an example of a function that doesn't easily have an intuitive area under the curve. And we'll see how this one doesn't actually satisfy the Riemann definition for having a Riemann integral. So it, we'll take the Dirichlet function. It's a classical example of a function that isn't Riemann integrable. And we'll just take it on the interval from 0 to 1. So it's going to map the interval 0 to 1 into the real line. And it's a very simple function. It's an indicator function. It's going to take x and it's going to map it onto either 1 or 0. And it's an indicator function for the rational numbers. So the rationals are going to be mapped onto 1. And all the other numbers, the irrational numbers, they're going to be mapped onto 0. So if we try and graphically represent this function, so here is our codomain axis, here is our domain axis. This can be the interval 0 to 1 here. This is 1 up here in the codomain axis. Now, there are infinitely many rational numbers in this interval, and there are infinitely many irrational numbers, although, of course, the size of those infinities differs. There are countably infinitely many rational numbers here, and there are uncountably infinitely many irrational numbers here. So all of that countably infinitely many rational numbers, if we're trying to graphically plot where they're going to be, they're going to be mapped up to 1 up here. So I'm only drawing a finite number of them, but really there's going to need to be an infinite number there. So really it's going to, there's going to be so many of them that it's going to actually look a bit like a straight line there. But of course there are a huge number of holes in there because all the irrational numbers are not being mapped onto 1. Indeed all of them are being mapped out onto 0 down here and there's so many of them again that it's going to just look like a straight line. So this is a very strange curve because you've got these two straight lines, but both of them have kind of got holes in. This one's got holes in where all the irrational numbers are missing, and this one's got holes in where all the rational numbers are missing. And in some ways, there's far more holes up here than there are down here. So what is the area under that curve? It's not intuitively so obvious, is it? Is it the area underneath this one, which is 1 times 1, 1, or is it the area under this one, which is 0 times 1, which is 0? Much more difficult, not intuitive at all, and we'll see how not easy at all. We'll see how this function does not have a Riemann integral. So anyway, back up to our function that intuitively does have an area under its curve, and therefore intuitively should be Riemann integrable. Let's think and try and motivate this definition. So what we have seen so far is if you take any dissection d, then we've seen that the upper Riemann sum for this function over that dissection d will intuitively always give us a value that is too big. It's more positive than the value of the area, bigger than the area. And the lower Riemann sum over that dissection will always give us a value that is too small, less than or equal to the value that we actually want the area to be. Now, Think about what happens if you make the dissection more and more refined, because what we've shown is that refining the dissection makes these upper and lower Riemann sums better. It makes the upper Riemann sum come down towards the area, and the lower Riemann sum go up towards the area. What we can imagine doing is making it more and more refined. Now, we need to be a little bit more careful in what I mean by that. We need to make it more and more cuts, and we need to have them nicely spaced out. You see, if I took, for instance, this dissection that just has two cuts, I could make it more and more refined, but I could put all these new refinements just in this interval here. 
so I could put in a huge number of refinements, millions of the things, more and more, you know, I could go on and on, billions, trillions, I could put in loads of them, and it's true that each time I add more, my upper and lower Riemann sums will get better. However, they're not going to converge on the area because I'm not making this bit any more refined. Over here, my calculation is still incredibly unrefined and is not is going to stop us getting indefinitely close to the value of the area. What I want to instead think about doing is actually making it more and more refined everywhere. So not leaving a great big chunk here where I'm not refining it. So what I could think about doing is dividing my interval up into even pieces. And I could think about gradually raising the number of those pieces in the dissection. So gradually raising little n. So if I have my interval a, b here, um, that would be n is equal to 2, then we could have n is equal to 3, which I would show in red here, n is equal to 4, we can show that again in white, so we chop up there, uh, and we can go on, we could do n is equal to 5, n is equal to 6, n is equal to 7, n is equal to 8, in fact it might make sense to go up in powers of 2, that would nicely show up on the picture, so if we go up to n is equal to 8, we'd get 8 nicely uh, evenly distributed cuts, and then 16 again, 16 evenly distributed cuts. If we refine our dissection on and on like this, making more and more cuts and making sure that they're evenly distributed, and then hopefully what you can see is that every single one of the interval sizes will be converging and getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and hopefully you can appreciate how the upper Riemann sums will be becoming closer and closer to the value of the area, and the lower Riemann sums will be also becoming closer and closer to the value of the area. And the upper Riemann sums will be getting closer and closer to the value of the area from above, and the lower Riemann sums will be coming up to the value of the area from below. So the way we're going to define the function being Riemann integrable is if the upper Riemann sums and the lower Riemann sums converge on one another, get closer and closer, indefinitely close to one another, and then if they meet somewhere, if they're converging on the same thing from those two sides, then that's going to be the value of the area. So let me write down then this definition. So we saw actually at the end of the previous part of this video that no matter what two dissections you take, any lower Riemann sum will always be less than or equal to any upper Riemann sum, no matter what D1 and D2 are equal to. And we talked about thinking about creating these huge sets, so the huge set of all lower Riemann sum values, so all the possible lower Riemann sums you can get by taking all the possible dissections, and the set of all possible upper Riemann sums, so all the values to the upper Riemann sum that you can get by going over every single dissection. And we talked about how every single value in there is going to therefore be greater than or equal to every single value in here. Now, if the function should intuitively have an area under the curve, then we've just discussed how for these beautifully evenly refined dissections, these two things, or there should be lower Riemann sums and upper Riemann sums that are getting indefinitely close to one another. So if we consider these sort of dissections where we're evenly going over the interval and making it more and more refined everywhere, making sure that every single one of these intervals in the partition that the dissection is producing is getting smaller and smaller length, we've talked about how the lower Riemann sum and the upper Riemann sum for these types of dissections should be getting closer and closer to one another as you make this n bigger. Therefore, those ones for these dissections are also going to be included in these sets, so therefore these sets should be getting indefinitely close to one another. And the way we capture this is that the infimum of this great big set should be the same as the supremum of this set. So this is the definition. So we say that the function f is Riemann integrable over the interval a, b if the supremum over all dissections, so the supremum of this set of the lower Riemann sums, so as I say, that is the supremum 
of that set. So it means take every possible dissection you can have of your interval AB, look at all those possible lower Riemann sums and take the supremum of that set. And we know that that's guaranteed to exist because this set is bounded above and therefore will have a supremum. It's bounded above by all of the elements inside the uh, set of upper Riemann sums. So take any upper Riemann sum, that's an upper bound for this set. If this is equal to now the greatest lower bound, the infimum of the set of all upper Riemann sums, so the infimum over all dissections of the set of upper Riemann sums of the function f, if this is met, and I'm going to box this because it's so important, so box it in red, if this is met, then this is the definition for the function being Riemann integrable over the interval a, b, integrable. And that value that they're meeting at, this value of the supremum of the lower Riemann sums and the infimum of the upper Riemann sums, that is what we call the integral from a to b of f of x dx. So that is the definition then of the Riemann integrable uh, of the Riemann of what it means to be Riemann integrable and what the value of the Riemann integral actually is going to take. And again, I hope that that makes sense. So I'm going to draw another picture to explain this again because I want you to understand why that is intuitively capturing the concept of the area under this sort of function that intuitively should have an area. So if we have our function here, a, b. So we could imagine creating this great big set of lower Riemann sums for this function over all dissections. Now inside that set is going to be these incredibly brilliant choice of dissections. Now there's going to be some awful choices of dissections inside there as well, so some awful values for the lower Riemann sum. I mean, you could have the dissection where you make no cuts at all. That's an awful approximation for it. So there's going to be some awful answers in that set, but there's also going to be some excellent answers. In particular, these brilliant dissections that are making the size of all the intervals smaller and smaller. So, for instance, the dissection that we've just talked about, where we're splitting it into progressively smaller and smaller intervals of size 2 to the n, or of size 1 over 2 to the n, rather. That's how many we're splitting it into. Um, or rather, it will be b minus a over 2 to the n. So if we consider these intervals, so b minus a is the length of the overall interval, and we now want to divide it into 2 to the n pieces, even pieces, then each interval will be of size um, b minus a over 2 to the n. If we consider that and let d get, sorry, let n get bigger and bigger and bigger, then what we've got on the picture is n is equal to 4, then we all have n is equal to 8 here, and so on. I won't bother drawing for n is equal to 16. And you can see how for these dissections, if we draw this one and we draw the lower Riemann sum, so the lower Riemann sum for that little interval's contribution is going to be like that. For the next one, it's going to be something like that. For the next one, it's going to be something like that. For the next one, something like that, etc. And then if we draw the upper Riemann sums also on this picture, we'll draw them in blue. So here in blue is the upper Riemann sum. And then for this one, it's going to be like that, that additional little bit. The point that I hope you can sort of see from this picture is that as you make the dissection finer and finer, as you make n bigger and bigger here, that the lower Riemann sums are going to get bigger and bigger, and the upper Riemann sums are going to come down and down, and the upper Riemann sums are converging in on the value of the area, and the lower Riemann sums are converging up on the value of the area. So all of these lower Riemann sums and these upper Riemann sums will be inside these relevant sets. So we've only so far drawn the set of lower Riemann sums. Let's also add in here 
There's also going to be a great big set of all possible upper Riemann sums over every possible dissection. And again, there's going to be terrible ones in here. Awful choices of dissection will be contributing into the set, but also these brilliant dissections. And the ones we're really going to like are when n is enormous, so that, that's n equal a million. That's going to be a brilliant choice of dissection. And we're going to get brilliant values of the lower Riemann sum and upper Riemann sum that are going to be fantastic approximations for the real area under the curve. And the point is that they're all going to be in these sets. And as n gets bigger and bigger, they are going to be converging on the value of the area. So if you then imagine plotting these sets on a real line, so let's have this set plotted in green. So let's say these are some of the values of lower Riemann sums here, some terrible values here, but then there's some brilliant values over here in blue. These can be the values of upper Riemann sums here. And remember, they're all going to be greater than or equal to every single one of the green points. Well, because we've got all of these values that are converging in on the area, converging in on one another, then we're going to be coming down, down, down here. And these ones are going to be coming up, up, up here. And they're going to be converging on the same thing, which is the value of the actual area under the curve. So this is going to be the supremum for the set of all lower Riemann sums, and it's going to be the infimum for the set of all upper Riemann sums. So this isn't a rigorous explanation. It's not supposed to be a rigorous explanation. It's supposed to give you intuition for why this is the definition, why this is intuitively capturing the concept that there is an area under the curve. If the supremum of the lower Riemann sums is equal to the infimum of the upper Riemann sums, that correlates or that is capturing the fact that this function does have an area under the curve and that these upper Riemann sums are getting indefinitely close from above to that area and these lower Riemann sums are getting indefinitely close from below to the value of that area. So this is the precise definition. This is the intuition for why this precise definition captures this concept of the area under the curve. So again, to reiterate the actual precise definition, if the supremum over all dissections of the lower Riemann sums is equal to the infimum over all dissections of the upper Riemann sums, then we call the function Riemann integrable. That's the precise definition of Riemann integrability. And as I said at the beginning of the video, this is not the definition that Riemann initially came up with. It's equivalent to Riemann's initial definition. This is actually the Darbo definition for Riemann integrability. And that value, the value of the supremum of the lower Riemann sums and the infimum of the upper Riemann sums is then what we call the Riemann integrable of the function over the interval a, b.